It is estimated that 150,000 new cases of colon cancer were reported in 2010, and there were over 50,000 colon cancer-related deaths here in the United States just last year. Local colon and rectal specialist Dr. Andrew Vorenberg is here to tell us how early screenings and diet changes could possibly help lower your risk for this disease. Welcome, doctor. Thanks for coming in today. Well, thanks for having me this morning. We hear a lot about uh, colon health and colon screenings and the importance of this, but yet sometimes it still manages to slip by people. Unfortunately, uh, this is a silent disease until you manifest symptoms, and oftentimes the symptoms uh, indicate that the disease has already spread. Um, so people think, well, it, uh, I don't have any symptoms. Why should I get screened? Or uh, you know, I'm sure that I'm fine. So they ignore the symptoms. They ignore screening protocols. Mm -hmm. I guess that points out the fact that not, with not only colon health, but with all of our health, preventive measures are more important than waiting for symptoms. Right, that's true. Um, and unfortunately, there aren't a lot of preventive measures that we have for colon cancer other than screening. Mm -hmm. uh, there, as you mentioned earlier, uh, there have been some studies that show that changing your dietary habits, changing your lifestyle habits may decrease your risk of colon cancer, but certainly that hasn't been proven or correlated. Family history plays a big role in colon cancer as well. Plays a huge role in colon cancer. There are several different types of familial syndromes that uh, that predispose you to having colon cancer. And if and unfortunately, we're not smart enough to know exactly what gene is causing colon cancer. So the best we can do right now is if you have a family history of colon cancer, screen you a little bit more aggressively. Mm -hmm. We have some uh, graphics that we're going to show during this interview, so we want to give people a warning that some of the images are a little bit graphic, so yeah, <laughs> if you're a little bit that. squeamish, you may want to yeah. look away. But it's important that we take a look at these things. Absolutely. There's nothing like a little shock value to, to push you into the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. I found these fascinating. We have uh, a couple of examples here. This is the colonoscopy process. Right. This is a this is a picture from a colonoscopy, and that in the center is a is a large polyp, uh, with a with a narrow stalk that it has at the base. You can you can actually take that out through the colonoscope. Uh, this this polyp we think will turn into cancer in the next uh, five or ten years. So it's uh, it's silent. Nobody knew that this polyp was there. Uh, so taking it out certainly. Uh, gets us ahead of the curve in terms of preventing cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's take a look at the next graphic, and this is what? This is us snaring off another polyp. This is the, this is the actual, the white piece down below is the actual snare, and there's, a, there's a, um, an electrical loop that goes around the base of it, and we can he, uh, cauterize that and take the polyp out. And okay. then this third picture in the series. And that's after the polypectomy. Uh, so that's the scar that you form, uh, and that just goes away over in the next couple of weeks. Um, and uh, the the polyp was completely benign, but precancerous. And so, the next picture is the one you kind of go, oh, what oh is yes, this? yeah. <laughs> this is colon cancer in a in a specimen. Uh, I this gentleman uh, didn't have any symptoms in, except for weight loss, and he eventually started having some rectal bleeding. Uh, he presented to his doctor who sent him to us for a colonoscopy and this is what we found. He had, at this point, the cancer is too far gone to take that out. But at the bottom of the colon you can see uh, the lumpy bumpiness of the colon is the cancer itself. Uh, and this you cannot take out through the colonoscopy. So who should be getting the screenings? Uh, anybody with uh, higher risk, uh, at elevated risk of colon cancer. Those folks would be people with family history of colon cancer, people who have personal history of colon polyps or colon cancers themselves, um, people with familial syndromes um, uh, like familial adenomatous polyposis, and people who have inflammatory bowel disease. Mm -hmm. um, the other folks that should have uh, screening colonoscopies are anybody with any symptoms uh, which could indicate uh, colon cancer, including weight loss, change in bowel habits, rectal bleeding. Um, and unfortunately, again, the, the, uh, most people don't have symptoms of having polyps or cancers, so th everybody over the age of 50 should have a colonoscopy. Now, with it being no warning signs and having that uh, symptoms of risk factors, what can you do to lessen your risk? Uh, get screened. Um, uh, that would be the number one thing. At the age of 50, or unless you have a family history, you should be screened um, a little bit earlier. Uh, but that's one thing. Uh, change your diet. High fiber diet would be great. Uh, keep things moving through your colon smoothly. Um, 
uh, weight, weight loss has been uh, shown to decrease your risk of cancer. Um, and decrease the smoking. Mm -hmm. And doctor, a lot of people are very squeamish about the screening process itself, but it's painless. It's very painless. Uh, the, the worst part, and, it's, and actually it's not that bad, is the colon prep, um, which uh, causes a significant amount of diarrhea to clean out the colon. Mm -hmm. um, there are several different types of preps. Uh, they're actually easier than they were in the past. Uh, several years ago we did, we instituted a full gallon of Go Lightly, which doesn't really correlate with its name because you really go. Uh, <laughs> not lightly. <laughs> but it's not lightly. But uh, we now have a half of a gallon uh, liquid prep. There are also uh, pill preps for patients that are, uh, that are relatively healthy. They can tolerate uh, the pill form. So it's one it's of the best things people can do for themselves mm -hmm. is to get screened. You brought a T-shirt to kind of uh, show illustrate this. Since it's Colon and Rectal Cancer Awareness Month, the uh -huh. entire month of March, we made T-shirts. Uh, say, uh, if you're older than 50, you need a colonoscopy, and on the back of it, it says Colon Cancer Preventable, Treatable, and Beatable. So I brought some of these T-shirts over for you guys. Awesome. Um, Thank you. Most important thing: if you're over the age of 50, you should be screened. If you have any family history. Get in to see your doctor and make sure you get screened for All right. colon Thank cancer. Thank you, Dr. Vorenberg. Thanks so much for joining us Thank today. Thank you very much. Hopefully Thank you. even one person goes and gets a screening today. That's a good thing. Absolutely. Yep. All right. And if you'd like to get more information on the risk factors, the warning signs, and screening for colon cancer, we've got that for you on our website at WTVR.com VTN. That's right. A simple message, but a very strong one. Absolutely. We'll pay